Nice enough to join us here, the Hall of Famer, NFL Network, the great Michael Irvin. Michael, uh, thanks so much for your time. Got to ask you about this captaincy thing. Trey Lance was not named one of the captains today. How do you feel about that? How important is that to players? And and how often were you a Cowboys captain? Well, I I was never a captain. I've never got named a captain. It doesn't mean that you're you're not a leader or that you can't lead. It's just, you know, it's what it is. Um, these, the guys understand. Hey, Trey Lance is a young guy. He's learning. He's coming through the ropes and everything. They want him to worry about him. Don't worry about captaining, captaining the whole team. You get yourself ready and get yourself right to play. He's a young quarterback. It, 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 this, this has no bearing whatsoever. There. See, he's right. Uh, you weren't a captain, but... You knew who the loudest voices and the most influential voices were in the locker room because you had one of them. So how important is being a captain if it doesn't directly coincide with the most influential guys on the roster? Well, but, 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 but you, you, you're measuring influence by a different thing than maybe the team is measuring influence. You know, uh, they, they see some guy that's been there a while and, and, and put in the time and all the hard work, and, 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 and they're a captain. You know, and, and, uh, and, and Trey Lance, they see a young guy still learning. You know what I mean? But trust me, trust me, whether he has a C on his chest or not, Trey Lance is captaining the team because he, he, he's the quarterback. He's the quarterback. We don't have to put a C on his chest. That's no indication that he's not a leader or his team didn't pick him to be a captain. That, that's, just, that's just not the truth. The playmaker with us, Michael Irvin. Michael, what do you think is the single most important thing Trey has to do here early in the season to help the team win and to establish himself as the guy who is going to be the quarterback all season long and should hold down that job? Well, and it, this, is a, this is a fine line. Because you want this man to be aggressive and be who he is and go forward and learn and take this thing over. Take it over. But you don't want him to jump out there and make a, and make a lot of mistakes. You don't want him to jump out there and turn the ball over quite a bit because then it starts messing with his own head. Um, and, and Trey Lance can minimize the mistakes. Just minimize the mistakes, which is very difficult for a young guy that hadn't played a lot of football like he hasn't played. But can minimize the mistakes and minimize the turnovers. His talent to take you out of rest. He just got to minimize those turnovers, most important. Uh, is that something, I mean, everything, I guess, can be taught to a certain extent, but how much of that is simply the natural gift of knowing how to protect the football and not throw into tight spaces? How much of that is learned and how much that is innate? Well, I, 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 it's, it's a good question. It's a good question because... You, you, you can learn a great deal about about this game. Now, when you have such great talents as a Trey Lance, you've probably you've probably always been the greatest athlete or one of the best athletes when whenever you're playing on a team. You know what I mean? So, 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 Trey, Trey got all of these gifts, all of these talents. You want him to be aggressive with those gifts and talents. You know. But you want him to learn to think the game, not just play the game. Imagine if you had Trey Lance gifts, abilities, um, athletic abilities, but it had Tom Brady's mind, my, my, my mindset. Boy, now you got something. You know what I mean? You got that kind of gift and that kind of talent, seeing the game this kind of way. Now, now you have something. And that's what Kyle Shanahan is trying to work on. Try and make sure this kid sees the game a certain kind of way where his talent can really just take off. Michael Irvin with us. Michael, do you think maybe that was a big part of the appeal for Kyle Shanahan, given that he had a quarterback who is not very experienced, hasn't played a lot? Kyle may be seeing the opportunity to really form this guy. Everything he learns about pro football, he's going to learn through my eyes. Is that maybe one of the things they loved about Trey Lance is that he hadn't learned a lot about football yet? Well, you know, if you, you 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 wish you can get as much experience as much experience as you can get, mm-hmm. an actual playing football. 
you know, that there's no uh, he play less football, so so that makes him a better candidate. Gotcha. So you want him to get as much experience as he can. But but you got to look at that kind of talent, that kind of gift. Kyle Shanahan's We're only looking at it from the perspective of the young man, of the quarterback, Trey Lance. But Kyle Shanahan, who's had success with backup quarterbacks like Nick Mullins and all of these guys, you know, had kept teams and kept San Fran in games when he was playing these guys at quarterback. Now he get this kind of talent to grow. Absolutely, that's part of the appeal, that he can grow that talent. But he wishes he had more experience also. Um, this is a hypothetical based on, you know, hey, this could happen. Take game six, Lance struggles, Shanahan decides to put Garoppolo in. Is it safer for the rest of the players if Lance gets it? gets his job back immediately, or is there something that you do when you change quarterbacks that says, we're trying this guy and not just for a couple of series? Because I know they do that in college. I don't see it very much in the pros. I'm wondering what the smarter play is in terms of the way the other players would react to it. Uh, uh, Guys understand we're we're trying to win football games. And they, they, they understand that there's a now and there's a later. And most teams are trying to be for both the now and the later. You, you, you know, and, and Kyle, Kyle Shanahan has got this young man, and he is the later, and he wants to get the experience right now because if he can get the quarterback position just caught up with the rest of the team, this team can have an opportunity to play in, some, play, play in that big game almost every year because they got a lot of young talent and a lot of young talent around uh, around Trey Lance. Catching up with the playmaker, of course, Michael Irvin on 95.7 The Game and Stamen and Rado. Yeah, I see how small that is, how small the margin that is. Like, yeah. What makes you think Trey Lance is that Jimmy G went to a Super Bowl in an NFC Championship game. Now, 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 we just can't get there with them. I mean, it's a small margin. It's a small margin, man. It's, it's, it's incredible in this league. Yeah. Uh, Michael, fans, of course, get so excited about opening day. What does it mean for players? Was there an opening day or two or a play from opening day that still stands out uh, in your mind as a player? Yeah, let me tell you. It's so funny you asked that, asked that question because, for me, it was uh, we opened up in Pittsburgh. And it just got these young cornerback, and the young cornerback he was just talking all kind of noise. I'm not scared of my girl. I, I, I'm gonna cover my girl. I'm gonna get right there. I'm gonna be right on him. Man, we started the game, you know. And, and he was a rookie. And when, when, when we're practicing that week, Troy was like, "Huh?" Troy said, hey, "That rookie, he's talking a lot over there, huh?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, he's talking." I said, "But, but, but, we shall be like that." You know how everybody bring the peace priests around. They get take last right, and they swear. They, they swear they're prepared to go see their maker. They're ready to leave time and go to eternity. And then death comes to the door. <gasps> oh no! Oh no! No! You, you see what I'm saying? That that that's what that is like. You think you're ready, <laughs> but you ain't ready. And that's what I tried to tell that young buck. Man, I killed that young buck. And every time I caught a pass. I caught a couple of touchdowns, but every time I caught a pass, I said, oh, you ain't scared of Mike Irvin, huh? Oh, you ain't scared of Mike Irvin. Well, I'm going to make your mama, boy, well, your mama won't see this today. Your mama, I was killing the dude, man. That, that, that's the opening game that I remember. And, and my rookie year, my rookie year, my opening game, I was playing Pittsburgh, going up against Rod Woodson. Mm. I called a curl route, ran, Rod Woodson caught me in the end zone. Uh, I called Carl. I called a touchdown. Rod was caught me in his own. I don't think I caught the touchdown on Rod, but Rod was the one to come across the field to t- tackle me. So it made it like, you know, it was like uh, dunk on somebody yeah, yeah. and the closest person to the rim. Yeah. You got dunked on. You could be at half court, but that's <laughs> on you, dog. You got dunked on. That's kind of how that was. Do you do you just do that kind of talking to somebody who talks to you first? Or once you've established that you can turn a guy into toast, do you constantly remind him of it, even after the the annoyance of the original slight is gone? 
Oh, yeah, you, yeah, 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 you don't let that go. Go ahead and go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just trying to beat him. I'm trying to own him. You know, he opened his mouth. Now I'm going to own you. I'm going to beat you this time so badly, it's going to help me next time I play you. You ain't going to want to play no more. That's what I'm about to do to you. You know what I'm saying? That's the mentality, man. Boy, let me, dog, let me tell you something, man. I miss that more than anything. That's what you miss when you leave the game, that ability to impose your will upon another man. When he's saying no, you saying let's go. That there's nothing like that. Wow, wow. Michael Irvin, our guest, of course, here on 95.7 The Game. Speaking of those type of things, calling your shot, uh, we know that uh, Darnell Mooney of the Bears, he said this week, he said, hey, uh, Justin Fields is going to have something special for the 49ers because they passed on him. Now, this wasn't Justin Fields saying it. It was his teammate but in your mind, at this point, how do you compare Justin Fields, where he is with the Bears, and Trey Lance, and where we think he is with the 49ers? Well, it's pretty good, two different situations. Those are two totally different situations. Justin Fields got a team that very well may be the worst roster um, around him in, in, in the NFL, or certainly maybe even in the NFC. You know, Trey Lance has got a team with one of the best rosters around him. You know, that's and it's totally totally two different things. I I, I see Trey I Trey Justin Fields wish he could have landed in a spot like Trey Lance with the kind of offensive mind that they have in San Francisco and, and, and him not be twirling around in Chicago dealing with the stuff he's dealing with. These are worlds apart. Um that said, do you remember any team that passed on you in the draft, and did you make it a thing mm. to remind them of it over and over again? Or is that something you only do the one time because after that you've proven your point? Well, I, I would imagine if a team passed on someone, and, and, and you, you know, the Tom Brady's, uh, guys like that, you, you hold that every year. You just hold it against them every year. My situation was different, guys. You know, when I, when I graduated, I, I graduated after my junior year of eligibility, so teams wasn't passed. Couldn't was I passing on me? I was passing on them. You know, like Green Bay mm-hmm. called us, and I don't think so. No way, no way. Don't draft me <laughs> because since I was a junior back then, if the team drafted me, I could have dropped the class and gone back to school. That team would have lost the draft pick. So I was trying to control the draft that way. So when teams, so I wanted to go to New York, uh, L.A. Or Dallas, I went one of the coast or Dallas. That was it. Nothing else. So anybody else drive me, they were not going to get a player. I was going to one of these three areas. So let's see. Uh, Lucas just telling us Tim Brown, Sterling Sharp were drafted ahead of you, but you didn't care right. because you ended up where you wanted to be. Right, Green Bay. Green Bay. Sterling had uh, yeah. Oakland had the fifth pick and took Tim Brown. Green Bay had the seventh pick. They called me. I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not leaving Florida, going to Green Bay. No, 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 no. And then my whole family started chanting, no way Green Bay, no way Green Bay. We are, we, 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 we were at the time, you know, the brokest people in the world. What are we talking about? No way. We should have gotten in. anybody trash us. Just a hot on that play. I'm sitting over here trying, as, trying to negotiate. As a matter of fact, Dallas didn't call me and they didn't have to because Jimmy had told me prior to the draft, he said, Dallas is going to draft you. He said, Michael, none of that shenanigans with Dallas because an oil friend of mine is about to buy the Cowboys. Wow. He'll be joining you in a year. Would you be? Would you have been fine with Green Bay if they weren't bad at the time? No, 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 no. I, I don't. I don't know if Green Bay was ready for brothers. It's certainly not a brother like Mike. They were four and twelve, <laughs> so they were they were indeed bad. If they were twelve and four, would you have thought differently? No, uh, no, 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 no. It's not the team. It's not the team. What the team? What the team? It was the weather in the location of the city that I had an issue with. You know what I'm saying? And so, so yeah. I, 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 but, but Sterling had a great career in Green Bay. Sure. I mean, it was it was perfect for Sterling, man. It was 
It just what man, I, I I really have a problem playing in cold weather. I mean, it just messes with my mind so bad. I just couldn't take it. So I was just so happy. I, I, I just couldn't take anything. So, Michael, how early on in the process did you guys know? Did you recognize? Wow, we are going to be one of the great NFL teams of all time. Man, you, you know, I would say I got drafted in '88. Uh, and it was three and thirteen. Troy came in in eighty nine. We were one and fifteen. We got Emmett in ninety, and 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 uh, and then we started turning that thing around. And I remember after the ninety one season, I, I, I had one receiver of the year, and Emmett was running back of the year, and he was driving home. He said, "Man, we had a great year, man." He said, "It's a great year." I said, "Yeah, hey, it's nothing though. We, we're gonna get it again next year." He said, "Yeah, we're gonna really tear it up next year," and then. Then it took off from there, you know. It, it took off, but but there were many times we came back to those rooms, came back to those meeting rooms that had players only meetings, talking about we're not going with this. No, we're not arguing about what the coach is calling. Whatever he calls, they just go through it, and then we still go get our heads kicked in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we had come back in that room looking at each other. We didn't have any answers, but but when it turned, when it turned. It's what held us together because we started that way first, and, and we built it into something. Hmm. What What's the game you would absolutely refuse to miss this weekend, and what is the game they couldn't pay you enough to watch? Oh man, I don't know that you can call out a game that they couldn't pay me enough to watch. I'll let the Texans slide now <laughs> in a couple of weeks. I'll, in a couple of weeks, and, and you know the NFL. I mean. They're gonna, you know, they'll have Deshaun Watson coming back, and he'll be lining up against the Texans. I'm gonna watch that game. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to watch that game just to see if anything superhuman happened in that game with all the emotions that circulating around that game. But man, right now the NFL, what I'm saying is the NFL has done such a great job of using other things and having these guys and having these teams match up. We got Baker Mayfield. Going up against Cleveland week one. Wow. On Sunday. Okay. Well, you got you got Russell Wilson going up against Seattle in week one. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all of those games with all those extra emotions around them, those are the must see games. Michael, we've been trying to figure out, as we do every year, everyone does, you know, what team this year might surprise, for better or worse, what team's going to be a lot better than everyone thinks, what team might be worse. Do you see, the reason I ask here is because you mentioned Baker Mayfield, some people think Carolina is going to be a lot better than, than expected. Do you see anybody at this point that you think, watch out for this team because they're going to win a lot more games than people think they're going to win? Well, outside of the Philadelphia that everybody's talking about, I, you know, that's the team that I, that I, I picked early. Not that I, I, I take happily, you know, <laughs> Eagles and the biggest Cowboys, right? Yeah. But but you you, I, you see what they're doing. I mean, they got they got they got a defense man. That boy Jordan Davis learned from Fletcher Cox. I wanted that Nicole Dean, that linebacker from Georgia. They got those guys, man, and, and and then on offense, just they got they got such great weapons and diversified weapons on offense. And it's an unorthodox quarterback. If this kid. It has a good throwing year. Philadelphia so can really take off. Now, I know you also, you say that uh, this was NFL Network, I believe, maybe it was a podcast, I apologize. Kirk Cousins is your pick to be the MVP, I and mean, that's that's raising some eyebrows, Michael. Yeah, it is, and I understand that people, people, we like to keep everybody tied into a box. Kirk Cousins has, has, has had 25, at least 25 touchdown passes over the last, Seven years. Nobody else can claim that. Not Aaron Rodgers, not Tom Brady, seven straight years. And those last four, they has been with uh, Minnesota with a defensive mind head coach. Now, let's speed forward. And I did have Justin Jefferson and Devin Cook on my podcast. I'm not just pulling this out the air. I am taking in the information I get that I use in the off season when people tell me how camp is going, what they see in camp. I got to assess this and then assign something. And I said this is where this MVP is going. Think about this. You 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 know a team, a defensive-minded team, all his career, uh, all, all of those years in Minnesota, he's been a defensive-minded team. 
Now the offense team, the offense is going to have the control because Kevin O'Connell is an offense coach. You want to put Justin Jefferson in the Cooper Cup role. Justin Jefferson, he already said he's going to be the best receiver this year. And I believe it. If you give him the targets and the opportunities that Cooper Cup had. Cooper Cup had over 230 targets last year. I'm going to say this again. Over 230 <laughs> targets last year. Most ever guy in the season was 140, 145, something like that. He had 230. Wow. Justin Jefferson in that spot is going to be insane. And Kirk Cousins will have a chance to win MVP if he delivers that ball. Michael, who's the quarterback playing now that you would most want to play with? Nothing against the great quarterback you played with, but of the guys playing now, who would you most want to play wide receiver with? Man, I, I, I play, you know, I, I said this, I did this last year. We got into a debate about uh, top quarterbacks, would you take, you know, when Aaron Rodgers was going through all that stuff, I was like, I don't know, I'm not messing with Aaron Rodgers, man. Somebody this, somebody that. And then it's like Aaron Rodgers just beat me down all season. Every time I hmm. saw him play, he was like, Michael, remember what you said? Watch this throw. <laughs> Michael. It was, just, you know, it was like he was just vexing me. I said, so, so, and then to take it farther, we go to the NFL honors. I'm sitting Second row in uh, right there in the end, right on the front. Who's sitting in the first row right in front of me? Aaron Rodgers. Brown, corduroy <laughs> suit, looking spiffy, looking good, collecting his second MVP trophy right in my face. I lean forward. I whispered in his ear. I said, hey, I'm sorry. I'll never <laughs> see anybody better than you again. I just want you to know that. Never again. And you lean back. He smirked and looked at me. You know? Cause, cause because those kind of guys, they hear everything and they internalize everything. And that's why they're so great. It, it, it would have been incredible to play with a guy like Aaron Rodgers. How do you think, Michael, guys like Kittle and, and Debo, Ayuk is not that experienced, but he's been around a while. It looks like a breakthrough year for him, maybe. How can they help a young quarterback like Trey Lance uh, develop? What, what's, the, what's the most useful things those receivers can do for this young quarterback? You make plays. You make plays, and don't ask him to make. Don't ask him to throw ball, throw the ball perfectly. Wherever the ball go, you go and get it. Bar none. I don't care. I may have told y'all got in fact when Troy first came in. At first, it was for preseason game. Troy, I said, hey man, first thing I said to Troy, no matter what, if you end out, throw the ball. I got it. I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> I said that to him always. We get in the first preseason game. We're running a 262, which is just two outside slant routes by the wide receiver. Vincey Glenn. Vincey Glenn knows that, you know, hey, Troy was first round quarterback. I'm the, I was the year before first round receiver. We're trying to get our team together. He baits Troy, leans one way, and then he just takes off running straight for me. I saw it when Troy backed up and he started getting ready to throw a slant. I said, oh, no, 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 not now. He threw it. He threw it, and as the ball was in there, I promise you. I could see the ball. I saw Vince again. I said, I can catch this ball and go to sleep. Or I can move out the way because it's preseason game. Hmm. But if I move out the way, I will lose Troy. Because I told him, no matter what, I will go get it. I had to catch the ball. I said, okay, Michael, go to sleep. And I got knocked out. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Really? Wow! But did you hang on? Three did, Super Bowls. Did you hang on? Hold to the ball. Yeah, I held on to the ball. Wow! Got knocked out. I, 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 I act like I was good. I said, "I'm good. I'm good. I'm good." <laughs> got up. I said, "I'm good. I'm good." And then I started walking to the wrong side. And they grabbed me. So it's over this way, buddy. I said, "Okay, maybe somebody should come and get me." Maybe somebody. Wow! <laughs> but, but, but but it was about gaining that trust. And that's what those guys have to do. They have to go get that ball no matter what so we can gain <laughs> trust. That's incredible. Hey, before we let you go, and of course you're going to be on all the time here. We look forward to it. Um, but we know you have things to do. Everybody seems like everybody, Buffalo, Buffalo, Buffalo's a team. Now we know who your NFC pick is going to be. But it, Buffalo, is that your pick? Is Buffalo going to be the, the Super Bowl champion this year? Hello. Hello, guys. Yeah. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. Yeah, I lost. I lost. I lost. Yeah. Now you say everybody's saying Buffalo. Yeah, and I know you're picking, I believe you're picking the Cowboys in the NFC, but are you on the Buffalo bandwagon? A lot of people, a lot of experts at your NFL media, a lot of people. Buffalo's a team this year. Are you on that bandwagon? 
Yeah, I am on that bandwagon. I'm on that bandwagon. Buffalo. Oh, we lost Michael there. We'll just leave it there. Thank you. That's Michael Irvin. We got his pick. <laughs> I think we got enough out of the great playmaker, right, Ray? But, uh, yeah, we incredible might. Incredible chat with the amazing uh, Michael Irvin. Yeah, he'll Thank talk you for your time, Michael. Day. Yeah.